Hi, you're listening to When Isabel Met Aviva, a podcast about rom-coms, female-driven screenwriting, and how to break into the entertainment industry. I'm Isabel. And I'm Aviva. And welcome to our next episode. (laughs) Yeah, welcome back, guys. Today is not an interview, which is unusual lately. I know, we haven't (laughs) done a non-interview episode in a long time. I know. So we thought we would just chat. We have some interviews coming up, but we thought we were just... We have a list of topics to discuss yeah. that we, we've been texting that we've about. we've already been texting about. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, we need to stop texting and record. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have some uh, rom-com rage, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to call it, I guess. And uh, yeah, what, what, what should we chat about first? <laughs> Should we start? Well, I guess let's start with like what we've been up to or like yeah. how, how things are going. I feel like um, that's always a good way to start to like let people know that they're not alone and however they're feeling (laughs) right now because I do feel like it's been such a weird year right for I would think everyone in the industry it just feels very slow and stagnant and not much is really happening or going on but then all these big movies come out and it's like (laughs) what is happening it's, it's, it's a it's kind of a hard time I guess some days I feel like I'm all over the place emotionally with mm-hmm. like hope and motivation for my career. Like Same. some days, like I'm like when I'm texting, I'm like we're gonna make it so su- like I know we are, and like things are happening. But then some days I'm just like, is this even a good script? Like what am I doing? <laughs> like <laughs> just depends on my mood, I guess. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I feel like I was doing so well at the start of the year, and then I kind of just like hit a wall. And then I didn't yeah. write for like a solid two or three months, but I mean, yeah. I had a lot, I've had a lot of like work chaos. So it kind of was just hard to balance work life and writing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now I feel like I'm in a better place where I've been pretty consistent, like writing every week, um, awesome. working on some stuff that I can't really talk about, but like just other scripts that are in motion. Um, and then my own, I just, I do feel like I, kind of like maybe after taking some time off and I think again this is like um some advice that I would say to people Mm -hmm. like whenever you're feeling you know down or like oh I'm not writing I don't have any creativity that sometimes really the best thing to do is to just not write and just like live your life and like kind of let that creativity come back to you I definitely am someone who struggles with that a lot but looking back on it I'm like oh yeah that is kind of what just has to happen sometimes because I once I allowed that to happen, now I'm kind of back into my creative bubble where I'm like, I have so many ideas and I have so much to write about and so much I want to do. Now I just have to find the time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think we've talked about this before, but I think that like, you know, the phrase like a writer writes every day brings a lot of shame to like, (laughs) (laughs) to me sometimes. Cause I, I, you know, I do go through periods of writing every day. And then like you're saying, there are periods of time or you're living or you're doing something else and yeah I mean I guess that maybe is all under the writing umbrella I don't know depending on what you consider writing but sometimes I yeah I feel a little guilty about that if I'm not writing well to quote our love Nora Ephron like she always says everything is copy and I always think about that Mm -hmm. sometimes when I have those days where I'm like I'm not really doing anything to help my career and it's like everything is copy like your whole you just going out and living your life and but like keeping like taking notes or writing down ideas as they come to you like that's all a part of the whole process right so yeah I think even if you just have some random ideas for characters or log lines and stuff that you come up with and you just write those down when you have them like that's that can be enough for a day (laughs) for sure yeah yeah I have to remember more to like put note you know have that note app because sometimes I'm really good about it have you been adding to your note app a lot I, yeah I add lately notes to, yeah I have I'm definitely the Virgo in me who has mm-hmm. like my notes all organized by like film ideas television ideas and then under film ideas it's like rom-com ideas thriller Yay! ideas blah, blah, blah. so I have like a list of just running ideas or little character traits or personalities I definitely have like I would I have that all uploaded to the cloud too. So if I ever lose my phone, I still yeah, have my, yeah. <laughs> same, my notes. Same. Yeah. I, I, my note is from years ago. So it's funny to like scroll back and 
cutesy old ideas. I know. Sometimes, sometimes I, still I do use love them. reading those, and I'm just like, what the heck was I thinking? I know. <laughs> like, sometimes it's I don't like know super, <laughs> yeah. super basic, or like, I don't know. I don't entirely know what I meant. Uh, but that's but yes, where I got my yeah. Zach Efron script idea because that was just something I, I think I wrote down probably like what four or five years before I even wrote it. Yeah. It was just like a little idea of like, oh, haha, ha, that'd be a funny idea. So that's where just keeping a list, right? Can, yeah. Sometimes can really it, it takes years to, to like you. soak in or like, to, mm-hmm. or you like combine two ideas or something and then yeah, it turns exactly. into a script. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, you've definitely been a, in a writing phase and some things have been happening, but can't talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. As for me, yeah, I've been writing as well. Um, I feel like you've been writing a lot because you're in a yeah. program right now, right? Or yeah, a fellowship? I'm in a, this like fellowship through the Northwest Screenwriters Guild. So we've been developing like individually a project through like through the duration of the program. And it's it's kind of just a support group for right. Like we, you know, we have deadlines and then we like give each other feedback, one another feedback. And yeah, so I'm on, I think page 40 of my rom-com. So Ooh. I've actually been writing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been really fun. I call it a vomit draft, but just yeah. to like lower the stakes, but it's been really, <laughs> it's been, I have a good feeling about it for sure. I'm uh, excited. This is yeah. the one you I don't know if you want to say what the idea is, but you texted like the first page of it to me, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think I can share this. I mean, it's called Date Your Mom as of this moment. (laughs) It could change. Yeah, thank (laughs) you. (laughs) And um, yeah, it's a rom com set um, where I live on Bainbridge Island, which is outside of Seattle. And it's inspired by my experience of leaving the city for the first time in my life. And seeing like kind of quasi country life and you know people are beekeepers here and there's a lot of and gardeners and you know a lot of pickleball and it's like a kind of a retirement community vibe out here as well so I was inspired by that so my rom-com features a lot of older ladies which is new for me and that's uh, fun though I like yeah that. yeah so um I would I mean I don't know what will happen but it would be really cool to actually make it here and uh there is talent on the island <laughs> I can which is see cool. that though like now like it would be so fun to see a movie with a cast of like a group of like older women and then like yeah. one younger woman like that, yeah that's what I'm writing I'm yeah. here for that and a hot and guy as well <laughs> yeah. and of course there's gonna be a hot yeah, like grandson yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> honestly I'm ready to watch that mm-hmm. movie so please yeah. make that <laughs> I I think you know like shows like Hacks and um and the movie Nyad and like I, you know there is like demand for seeing older female actresses on screen I would love more of that and I haven't yeah. really seen it well I guess we have seen it this is a good maybe transition I was to... just gonna say we're, we're, there's a good segue here into our next topic yeah, the big debate segue. of the summer yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> do you want to begin <laughs> oh yeah so yeah we've been talking about um two well I don't know does the idea of you doesn't count as a rom-com right That's yeah more romance. Guess, yeah it didn't have much comedy in it I don't know yeah but maybe I laughed like once <laughs> I, I had like know, a I few remember. like little one-liners here and there but we, yeah. we've been Aviva and I obviously have um, been watching the yeah. the rom-coms or just any kind of romance movie that's been coming out so of course I think um you know we definitely have our opinions about the two big ones the idea of you versus a, a family affair which yeah. obviously features one of our hearts our loves Zac Efron <laughs> <laughs> yes um so we were kind of thinking about discussing our opinions or thoughts on the two of them we both have seen both of them now yeah and I think we originally were talking about this before right about like just this idea of older women dating younger men as like yeah. a storyline in Hollywood And I've been having conversations with other writers about this, both male and female. And I've been a little surprised, I guess, by everyone kind of being like, yeah, like it's time for women to like do this storyline of like dating younger men. And I'm like, okay, I'm here for that to a certain extent. Yeah, (laughs) I I feel that. You know, yeah. (laughs) Like I don't agree with the like, okay, men have done this like men dating younger women thing all the Mm -hmm. time. So why is it wrong for women to do it? And I'm just like, 
it's wrong for both to do it. So why, are we, <laughs> why do we want that for either? Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but. <laughs> I agree. It's like unethical. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm probably going to get canceled. That. That it's like unethical. No, I don't know. but it feels I think weird. it's odd. But I, I was having a conversation with a guy about it who was, yeah. you know, I think maybe coming from the perspective of like wanting to be like, I, you know, I'm a feminist person. Like, I think yeah. it's great that older women are doing these storylines where they're dating younger men. And I'm like, yeah, I I, I'm all for like older women dating and like seeing stuff like that. Like I love that idea, but why does the guy need to be like 22 years old? Yeah. <laughs> this is my question because I don't think that's okay for a man or a woman. I mean, I don't know. It just it gets. I feel that way too. That's the and part that's bothering me. Or yeah. I me feel like way. in the same, it's like the double standard, but then, and people are like, yeah, it's important to like, you know, flip it. But then, yeah, it's not, it's not really great either. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, I feel like I felt this way with objectification as well. Like I'm thinking of like Magic Mike and I'm kind of blanking on some other examples right now, but where I'm like, even though it's flipped, like, I don't feel good about this. I know, me too. (laughs) I agree. Like, it's not, I mean, that was one of the things I thought about a lot for Zac Efron when I was researching him for this, for the movie. And I was just like, it's, I feel for him it feel because i you know obviously women we deal with it like our entire lives from like the moment we're born we're just like immediately objectified by everybody (laughs) so it's like but i hate the idea of it's like oh it's worse for a woman like it's blah blah but it's still wrong no matter what and like i did think it was messed up like watching some of the interviews acted or like even just Mm -hmm. thinking about the i can't remember if it was like the mtv choice awards or whatever mm-hmm. award it was where he won for like best abs or you know something <laughs> yeah, like that yeah, i can't yeah, remember yeah, best yeah. shirtless scene whatever it was and it's like rita or or someone just like goes on stage and rips his shirt off like while he's talking like literally while he's giving was his acceptance or do you not know it doesn't you know? seem planned because he seems kind of thrown by it but then it's like he's you know a nice yeah. guy so he kind of goes along with it and everyone's like all the women are just like cheering and wooing and i was just like if this was a woman and a guy went on stage and it was like oh like best body award and they like <laughs> took her top off like can you you know what i mean i was like yeah. it it's not good either way like it's just it's why are we so obsessed with objectifying anybody <laughs> to I like know. It such an awkward lot. extent <laughs> i'm also thinking of the double standard just thinking of all the like how i just don't like it on either side like mm-hmm. um like violence as well like yeah. okay, this comes to mind like in the i think maybe i've mentioned this before like in the holiday which is like one of my favorite rom-coms ever like cameron diaz and this was made a long time ago too but cameron diaz like punches the guy her like ex yeah you know, and that and i'm always thinking like and that would never i don't know if this applies exactly but i just like it would never be approved the other way but it's like okay if like women slap men in yeah. films or punch them i don't know if that's entirely what we're saying but yeah i just feel like just like no punching no objectifying and these age gap things are i uh, know are weird yeah <laughs> the age themes. gap thing let's go back to that because yeah, that's, yeah we're, we're deviating that's yeah, kind yeah. of like the topic right of the two movies and i will say like i think for a while i was like hesitant to watch the idea of you because i immediately was like okay I love that it's based off of Harry Styles fan fiction. I'm so here yeah. for there being a whole mm-hmm. genre of just like fan fiction movies. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I think that's a great idea. But I then I was kind of like, well, why isn't it just about like, I want to see the movie of just like a regular young girl who like is of age, you know, and like goes to Coachella and then has a random run in with Harry Styles and like ends up. Yeah, like, hooking up and, like, that'd that, be so much that, more why fun. That be the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I yeah. So, OK, do you want to start with OK, you we, you saw a family affair first, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw I saw it the other way. Uh, so which one like. Okay, what did you think of A Family Affair, first okay. of all? <laughs> I know. I mean, I feel like I saw Wait, A Family Affair, with? and then that is what what made me finally be like, okay, let me watch the idea of you yeah. now, because I, yeah. I saw that, and then I I really loved the idea of you. I'll just say that. Like, I was mm-hmm. really pleasantly surprised by how well it was done, how I thought the script was really beautiful. I, I loved all the dialogue. I mean, I'm, I'm such a, like, I'm always there for, like, the, like, great dialogue and little monologues, yeah. so I thought Anne Hathaway's um monologues in that like she did such a good job on Mm -hmm. um so I was really surprised by that one and I I will say that like the age thing didn't bother me as much in that one as I thought it was and so I think maybe 
it was because he was perceived to be so much more mature because of like the life he had lived right in that um that he did kind of come off as like an older guy so i kind of let that part go and i I did love the like story of it too that they ended up together like or that they had the five year like let's see what happens spoiler but yeah yeah yeah. i was gonna say did i just spoil that for everybody but you guys haven't seen it by now (laughs) we can put a spoiler on that three months (laughs) yeah yeah it's been a while i was late to the party it's been out for a while yeah Um, i agree i thought that the monologues were really good like the scene after they eat the or during the sandwich like when she makes yeah the sandwich. when she's making the sandwich yeah, yeah i thought that was all really good and i am often distracted in films these days i don't know if it's to do with this day and age but also just like i just don't a lot of romance a lot of rom-coms don't keep my interest <laughs> these days uh but anyway during that movie i I like watched the whole time. I wasn't texting. I was gonna say I, I watched wasn't... it the whole way through, and yeah. I cried. Yeah, I cried at the end. <laughs> I thought it was so. Beautiful. It was really sweet. I yeah. So I don't know if it's something I would rewatch that many more times, mm-hmm. but I did like it. Uh, and you know, love Anne Hathaway. Uh, I'm gonna say the guy's name wrong, but I think he's great, and you know, been in other rom coms as well. Uh, Nicholas. What is his oh, name? I cannot remember his last it's name. Like Gazanti- it's like Gazantine. I'm saying it wrong. Like that. Um, I think he's great. I've uh, I've seen him in other stuff before. Uh, Red, white, and royal blue. He was in. He was great. And have you seen that? Mm-mm. That was great. Uh, he's just like he's good. He's a good romantic lead. He was in Cinderella. He's, he's very good. Uh, I think so, what yeah. they did so well in that movie that I originally I know we were gonna we were like we were gonna first start with the family affair. I was trying yeah, to set yeah. up that like I watched that <laughs> no, one and okay. then I went and watched. We're doing any it in you. chronological like release yeah. date. <laughs> but what I thought the idea of you did so good that is one of my favorite like tropes yeah. in rom coms is all of the like glances, the like mm. moment when they meet. I thought like that whole I loved how natural it felt, how like mm-hmm. it's it it was. Like, I feel like on paper reading the script, you would maybe be like, is this believable for her to just like randomly walk into the wrong trailer? But I loved like how she was like, oh, they're like the bathroom's there. And it's like, she just walked out and it's like, oh yeah, which one do you go into? And you just like see the one you think it is. And you go in, it's just like that whole like shot of her going into the wrong one, him being in there, their interaction. She doesn't know he is like that whole meet cute to me was done so well with all the little just like moments of the glances and like the kind of you really felt the chemistry there yeah and i say that to say that as much as i love like i want to reiterate to everyone listening like i love nicole kidman i love zach Efron, Mm -hmm. but they did not have like any chemistry in that movie and and i felt like that was so much of what was missing between like two romantic leads right is like that initial chemistry of like when they first when like they're meeting in the first scene i just felt like that wasn't there and so i didn't enjoy their whole meet cute and first hookup just felt very like wait what is going on here i know (laughs) it was like (laughs) it was just like kind of awkward it didn't feel it felt really fake like it felt like a play a movie like it just it felt like a a fake scene in something that they Mm -hmm. were like okay now we have to like hook up here versus like the the meet cute between i can't remember the characters names yeah it's been a bit for me <laughs> for either movie actually. yeah yeah actually but, same <laughs> and the uh, idea of you yeah. just felt like that was so natural it flowed really well i totally believed that that could happen and i felt the chemistry between the two of them yeah and so that for me it made me really think about like how much chemistry between the actors really matters because it it can really make or break a movie right yeah yeah, I agree. I, I think we're on the same page about both films. Yeah, The Idea of You, I think I did see twice. Like, I would recommend it to someone. A Family Affair. I. It was really it, funny, though. Yeah. Like, I have to say yeah. that. It, it was pretty funny. Like, they had a lot of really good moments. I thought some of the comedy was really good. Genuinely. I thought Joey King was amazing in it. Like, I love her. I, I mean, I liked her before, like I had seen the act and I'd seen Kissing Booth, but I wouldn't I say that Kissing I like, loved her or like really yeah. like, knew too much about her, but I felt like she was the best part of the movie. Like she stood out she to really me. Like, she's hilarious. She's really good at the um, big comedy moments. And like, I just thought her character, like I would watch, I would have just watched a whole movie about her character. <laughs> like, Same. yeah, I her agree. Life. <laughs> I think she should be in some rom-coms like mm-hmm. as the star. Cause I thought she was great. Yeah. There were some 
like we're saying, yeah, great comedy. Like the first 20 minutes of A Family Affair, I thought was really good. Yeah. Uh, like there were just a lot of laugh out because loud moments. Because it was moments. just Zach and Joey, right? It was <laughs> yeah, like more of the dynamic right. between the... the romance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just thought there was some great physical comedy. Like I really enjoyed the door, like the, the door she couldn't push. And there was some yeah, good, like physical so comedy I liked. Uh, uh, and it reminded, I mean, to bring back your script about Zac Efron, what is it called? Sure. <laughs> dating <laughs> Zac Efron. Yeah, dating Zac Efron. Um, it kind of, re- it felt like a little bit of a comp for years because mm-hmm. you see Zac Efron like parodying himself somewhat in A Family Affair, you know, playing this like obnoxious, high maintenance yeah. actor. Um, not that Zac Efron is that way in real life, but your script plays with like, you know, what it is, what it's like to be um a heartthrob celebrity yeah. <laughs> so uh but yeah I agree the romance did not work in a family affair and I was not rooting for them to be together at all I was like I know don't I, that, that's what I was missing too I <laughs> yeah. was just like I don't feel connected to them I feel more connected to the storyline of Joey and Zach I'm like I need to Zara that's her name Zara yeah, Zara, Zara and Chris, uh, Chris Cole is Chris, Zach's oh, character good memory okay. and I, I was remembering they had that little people magazine where it was like yeah 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 you yeah, know yeah. whatever Chris Cole is something um but I'm like that because it like to your point like the first 20 minutes were so good because it was just their dynamic and it felt a little bit like set it up like it was like just this like yeah. kind of annoying boss and the the quirky like assistant and like you're really on the side of the assistant and you want the assistant to get like what she deserves but i didn't it did feel like the romance between the mom and um the boss just was kind of randomly there and it didn't i didn't root for them in any yeah. way like yeah i, wasn't I emotionally yeah. committed to their relationship working out. i'm with you <laughs> and it was yeah i don't know i almost feel like more than the age gap the age gap was not what bothered me the most about a family affair it was just that like the leads didn't they didn't feel right together for me yeah maybe i don't know maybe age played into that but i don't know i I feel like i didn't even notice to be honest the age gap between the two of them so it didn't feel like that was a an issue i i think now that I'm, i'm remembering part of what i didn't like about it was like the acceleration of their relationship is all just through like a montage it's just like the scenes That's of them true. at the beach playing scrabble and doing all these things versus what what i want hollywood to stop doing is stuff like that and that's what I really loved about the idea of you because you really just felt like you were living in the moment of time of the relationship, mm-hmm. right? Like you felt the like pressure that started to become on them. You felt them getting closer. Like I loved that it like they didn't just like immediately start dating. Just like that's where yeah. it just felt so realistic to me where it's like, yeah, she's kind of like hesitant about it. She doesn't hook up with him right away. But then when he texts her like, oh, I'm in New York, like come. Like I just felt like that really felt like you went along on that journey Mm -hmm. with her and so that's what i really loved about it versus like had they just done what a family affair did and just did like okay now let's do this fun montage scene where she just like dates him and goes on tour and it's like all the different scenes of them hooking up while he's on tour or something like yeah i'm kind of tired of the montage maybe is what i'm getting at the montage montage, acceleration it has to happen at a different point yeah (laughs) montages are more for like i don't know showing passages of time but not so much like all the emotional building of the relationship like that's what i felt like a family affair was like all right now we're gonna see them go through this quick montage for two minutes. And by the end of that, you're supposed to be emotionally tied to their characters being together. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully no more age gap relationship (laughs) movies. I feel like that is not going to happen. I feel like every movie for the next few years is going to be about age gap. It could be a coincidence. You know what I was thinking about earlier? Remember when like um, no strings attached and Oh, friends with benefits. with benefits like came mm-hmm. out at the same time. Like I don't think that was planned, right? It was just they they came out at the same time, and then people. Kept I think comparing them. a family affair was shot a while ago, though. I feel like they were supposed to release it last year. Yes, I wonder if maybe right. they waited because of they heard that idea of you was coming out. I don't know. I I do wonder that too. Like, did it? Did they plan for it to be that way? Or yeah, I feel like I it was know. probably just a coincidence, but maybe. They, like helped each other in some way i don't know yeah. uh 
But yeah, no more, no more age gap <laughs> relationship movies, please, Raiders. No unless more it's age really gap good. relationships. But let's make movies where, like, uh, you're they're the same age, and it's like, I mean, I'm here for the like, um, the the idea of you type of thing, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I went to a Jonas Brother concert, and then I happened to meet Joe like in the like alleyway when they were leaving the venue, yeah. and we yeah. got, and then like it led to this whole like summer fling. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what else I want to point out, and this is not. I was having a conversation with someone who was telling me this. Um, actually, for both of these films, which inter- is interesting, um, there wasn't that much class difference, but especially in a family mm. affair which I think, which I agree with this person who was telling me makes it less fun because Joey or, you know, Joey King's family is already very wealthy. Yeah. I was thinking so that the too. idea of them, you know, being in this celebrity world, isn't even that foreign because the mom like wrote for Vogue and like is really successful. So I think yeah. maybe if they and were like d- poor or just I like agree. more middle I did class. I feel like there wasn't much like at stake. Yeah, like yeah. it's so she lost her job, and then it's just like, okay, now what are you gonna do? Like your your mom's got a ton of money. Like you don't seem like you're like struggling to keep a job. Like I think they kind of were trying to do that right when she got when she quit, and then she was yeah. kind of like, oh, what's next for me? And it's like you you live at home with your mom, like you don't have to pay rent. Like you're mm-hmm. like you know you're not struggling. Like you come from like a pretty wealthy family. Like it didn't feel like. There, was, there just didn't really feel like there was much to root for in that movie. I think yeah. that's what the biggest problem was. It's just like, what are we, what are you, what am I, why am I invested in this? Yeah. <laughs> Other than Agreed. to just watch Agreed. a movie with Zac Efron, Nicole Kidman, and Joey King. <laughs> I did, I think I texted you this, all this, but I really did like, without spoiling it, like the grocery store finale yeah. scene, I thought was really sweet. If I, If I cared about them getting together, but the idea of it, like I would have loved to see in a different rom-com because it was just really that's sweet true and something i did I hadn't think seen that before. was a really cute like fun ending i loved that whole the whole grocery store sort yeah. of scene through it all um i mean it was really funny there were so many like joey and zach both i think are really good at delivering lines and i've read that they improved a lot of stuff too so i feel like oh really they are that's good cool. comedy actors yeah. um i just wish that the story had been better could yes could i'm forgetting your script it's been a bit for your protagonist could joey king play your protagonist or do you think she's can cut this out if you don't (laughs) um i don't think she would i mean maybe yeah yeah, that would I'm be just funny. trying to think like because I liked their chem- like Joey King and Zac Efron chemistry in this. One, yeah, so. that's true. Either her or she could play Abigail and be the like sort of like social media girl yeah. that's like Ooh, to give yeah, her yeah, something yeah, yeah, different yeah. to play. Like she could That'd be, be good. Yeah, just, just knowing I'm that Joey King yeah. was like obsessed with Zac Efron when she was younger makes me feel like Joey King could totally be. In yeah, this that movie. would be a cute yeah. backstory. Yeah, she could really relate. Yeah, I've seen an interview. She's like, I had a Zac Efron lunchbox and all this. <laughs> I know. Stuff, I love that so she like told that. him to yeah. his face that she was like, I w- had your face and your posters like all over me. Mm-hmm, that made me feel amazing. a little bit better that maybe he won't think I'm too insane. Yeah, if he ever <laughs> reads my script. <laughs> mm-hmm. One day he will. One day yeah. soon. I feel it. <laughs> Another topic that we wanted to bring up um, is about um, sequels. This was a yeah. big text conversation last night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, okay, so we've been noticing, you know, noticing a trend. Well, this is, I don't even know if it's a trend. Do you think it's a trend? But just that <sighs> there have been some sequels announced lately in the rom com yeah. world that upset me. <laughs> and I don't want to get canceled, but we're going to be really honest. Uh, it's just like, okay, so we were texting. I think it's really hard to make a good sequel in general. It's mm-hmm. very, very rare that I see a sequel and can recommend it or even get through it. But the fact that they're like trying to make like rom com sequels is very bothersome. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think that they like the sort of like the gist of what Aviva and I were discussing last night is like we feel like Hollywood like doesn't know what we want and they're trying to Mm -hmm. like I I, I'm like I think what they're doing is like they're afraid to make original content because they're like we don't know if this is gonna like 
work or if people are going to see this. So instead, let's just put all our money into like sequels, right? Of like into yeah. like what's the word? I don't I don't know all the industry terms. The yeah. word for like they already have like a franchise, right? Or they already oh, have like the like IP. Yeah. Uh, yeah i i hear you <laughs> yeah it's like they're like okay we already know that there's an audience for this so like let's just make another one like i'll i'll use the example of yes. high school musical because yes. i know disney is wanting to do something with high school musical they want to do a high school musical four movie mm-hmm. or something like okay. that mm-hmm. and i'm just like ah, <laughs> uh, like i know that what they're probably gonna do right is like get them all together older and it's gonna just like so be depressing. some thing yeah it's gonna be <laughs> like i don't know i it's i'm here <laughs> to hear the ideas but i just am, i want to know like the if they're gonna do that this, they need to have like an og high school musical fan write that <laughs> you know what i mean like that's yeah. what they need yeah and not some yeah. older person who is like i think they want to just see everybody older and like their kids going to high school and now they're all in the music program like that's gonna be so bad <laughs> So bad. And, you know, I'll just list the other rom or the other films that have been announced that come to mind lately. So there's Freaky Friday, too. Yeah. Which, you know, oh it's gosh. not, not mm-hmm. a rom com, but I know. Movie, you know, I, you know, we also share our love not only for rom coms, but for like, like early 2000s, like, you know, like coming of age films. Yeah. I can't remember what year Freaky Friday came. Was it the early? It was early. It was early 2000s, 2000s right? Yeah. Okay. Was it a Disney Channel movie or no? I think so. I, I was going to say, was so? that a Disney Channel original or just a Disney Channel movie? It, it was in theaters, right? It wasn't yeah. like made for TV. Yeah, it wasn't made uh, for TV. That one is amazing. So I still have seen it in recent years and I think the comedy is still very good. <laughs> Which that uh, is a remake of a movie, yes, original movie. it is movie. a remake. Good point. Yes. Uh, just like The Parent Trap. But anyway, yeah. so they announced that they're doing a sequel and that <laughs> upsets me. I will see it. I will pay money to see it. Yeah. Which is why they're making it. I know. But... <laughs> see, that's what I think they know is like they all, they yeah. know that they can make the movie. We'll all go see it. Even It'll if just be we bad. have low hopes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I, you know, they're bringing back the cast and like, I just, I just get upset because I just feel like it's very unlikely that it's going to be good. And it's mostly just going to be, I think, some sort of like existential crisis as I watch it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I did like that point. I feel like that was a good point you brought up that Mm -hmm. you were saying that like part of the problem as to like why we don't necessarily want that version is like we don't want to see them as older because like we, we, we we like living in the world of like we like we don't know how it's like high school musical three like i don't necessarily want to see all of them grown up because that's gonna make me feel old and yeah it's gonna make me feel like like i'd rather like live in the like la la land version in my head of like oh what did what happened to troy and gabriella like what happened to all them when they went to school like actually the best thing like after that was when zach was on snl and he Mm -hmm. did like a skit where he played himself going coming back to like the east high to give the graduation speech and he was like you guys when you go to college people don't just like break out in song and dance (laughs) (laughs) but it's like that kind of parody of stuff i think does better than just like let's remake something with the actors older now and like make everyone yeah have an essential crisis because they're like seeing Lindsay lohan older not as like the two little yeah. girl twin versions of herself in the parent trap it's like imagine they did the parent trap too and it was like oh my god her me playing cry. the two of them older oh my gosh oh. yeah and now they no, have be twins so upsetting. and i love like you know the they call it the low what are they calling it the renaissance for Lindsay lohan i think she should be getting work but just not in the same film she already did yeah uh and then you know in the rom-com world like uh devil wears prada 2 has been announced yeah. and the first one is brilliant. I love it so much. Uh, Aline Broch McKenna is like one of my favorite screenwriters. I watch all her interviews. I love her. But I, I was disappointed to hear that they're doing a sequel because... Is she writing the sequel? I think so. Did they say anything yeah. about what the like idea plot of it is? is no, yeah. we should have we should have Googled this before. But <laughs> uh, I just saw it and I was like, really? Like, um it just it feels unlikely that it's gonna be like there's no way it could be as good you I know, know. Like, we I, already know that I know we were talking last night up too about um my big fat greek wedding it's like the first movie 
is so perfect. It is it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite rom coms. Brilliant. One of my favorite movies. It's so good. But yeah, the second one, I feel like I I don't even know if I finished the second one. <laughs> I'm like I know I, I definitely did. Out. I don't think I I don't think I even fit, like got through the third one. It's just like no, I I just I watched watch the third it. one because I was a little more curious about the third one because it's set in Greece. So I was like, okay, we'll at least have the wanderlust, yeah. you know, beautiful scenery aspect, which it did have. Uh, but it just it made me sad. It, I had an existential <laughs> crisis again. Well, that's the one that gave you the existential I think crisis. So because I was like, they're all older. They're just, I don't know. I just it didn't. It just felt wrong. And I, and I, and I, and, you know, a disclaimer again, like, I love the first one. I love the screenwriter. I think she's perfect. I think she's so talented. Uh, I don't want to be misinterpreted, but just, I just don't want to see these sequels, these, what do you call them? A three, I don't know. What is the third one called? It's, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know the word for it. I don't think there really is one. <laughs> um, and the only exceptions, as we were talking about in text, I feel like are when they're book series that are then yeah. adapted into films. So, you know, Sister to the Traveling Pants. Sister to the Traveling Pants, even Princess Diaries. If they did a Princess Diaries 3, I would have higher hopes because mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's something when it starts with a book and then is adapted. Um, yeah. But I will say that yeah. the I loved the first two movies of the. Um, for all the boys I loved before. Is that what it yes, was? Yes, those were, I didn't yeah. like the third movie, but I like I thought the first two were good. I can't remember all of them, but I That's did enjoy that movies. franchise. And then also even Kissing Booth. I, I love the first one. I think I enjoyed the second one. How many are, are there two? Is or that three? a book series? Kissing Booth? You know what? I should Google. I'm I feel like it could be. Hmm. I could be wrong. I, I never saw the second not. one. I've only seen the first one. Are there two or three? I'm forgetting. I feel like there might be three. I don't know. Okay, I'm forgetting. <laughs> There's um, definitely two. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, you know, franchises work, sequels work, but most of the time, no. Yeah. I think <laughs> uh, we just want to yeah. see more original content that's, yeah. like, in the vein of that. Like, a good example we had was, like, how horrible would it be if they tried to make, like, sequels in Seattle 2 or oh When God. Harry Met Sally 2 or, like, something like that versus Deep, just like let those movies upsetting. be what they are let them stand the test of time we mm -hmm. love those movies we don't need to see like another version of those especially shot in like because i think too maybe what is jarring is like an older movie like that and then like it would mm -hmm. just i don't know i just don't know if we would enjoy seeing like tom hanks and make ryan older like in the like way movies are shot now versus oh, yeah. compared to what the I wouldn't is. mind seeing them together on screen in a rom com, but yeah, not the same. Not, yeah, not the, same the same stories. Characters. That would be upsetting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would make me really sad. Uh, I wonder if other people feel this way. Like, <laughs> yeah, let us other know. People, yeah, let us know. Maybe other. Have, I did encounter a few. Like, I think my cousin was like, "No, I'm really excited about Freaky Friday too." So, like, maybe we're in the minority. Yeah, maybe we're in the minority. Um, when is they Michael announced, Murray going to be in Freaky Friday too? I think he is, um, and he's still, you know, he's aged beautifully. He's great. Mm -hmm. Nothing against him, but uh, yeah, I. What was I going to say? Oh, I was. Ex you know what is an exception, but it, it probably would have been really bad uh, when they announced the Lizzie McGuire revival. Oh, like they were, yeah. I was so excited about that, uh, but it probably would have been bad. I know um, it probably would have been. If it's well, a maybe, it's for the best. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when they tried to do Girl Meets World, right? With Boy yes. Meets World, like that was so bad. And I was such a fan of Boy Meets World yes, growing me up. Like too. one of my favorite shows. So good. I after watching the first episode of Girl Meets World, even though I love Sabrina Carpenter, right? Is the yeah. girl in it? It just was not good. It's like it's. No. They, I think what they do wrong is that they try to change it all to fit like today's ver way of like doing stuff versus like everything worked at the time because it was done like in a different way so you can't like that's adapt a good it point. like that like that 90s show i feel like is a good example yes. too of like had they just literally done that 90s show exactly as they did that 70s show i think it would have been better but instead they tried to be it like oh a bunch of gen zers like find yeah, the stuff just... from the 90s and it cheapens know. it and it yeah. just makes me upset. <laughs> I know, yeah. It just wasn't funny. 
I mean, no. I don't know. If people, I think there's another season of that, right? There so is. People are watching it, but I watched I... last season, but it was like not. It was like one of those shows where like I was like doing the dishes and like you know like a third of me was paying attention. I know. But... I'm so tired of that kind of content, though. I know. I'm like, why do they like? I just want something that actually moves me, and that's I what I have to I say. Just going back to the idea of you, I was pleasantly surprised how much that moved me because I just thought it was a beautiful like that to me like I got I was able to get past the age on that because it did I felt like it had a good conversation about age and that's ultimately where I'm like okay that is the kind of movie I'm here for because it left me thinking about it and like it gave me something to ponder right and like that's how you want to feel when you leave a movie is like it moved me it made me think about something made me see a different perspective and like even though I don't necessarily want to like support like relationships between 20 year old boys and like 40 year old women. uh, I was open to the like conversation or like the, what the movie was the the story in that specific movie. So that's where I'm just like, I want more stuff that moves me versus just trying to make me distracted while I'm doing the dishes, distracted while I'm doing this. Like agreed. And I think, um, yeah yeah i think we were texting about this too like like they're they're on the right track hollywood these producers whoever's making these like that we want nostalgic content that Mm -hmm. is so true but they're just not executing it in this way in an original way yeah i think is the conclusion (laughs) they're just not they're not taking a chance on original material especially in i feel like the chick flick rom-com space whatever you Mm -hmm. want to call it uh, they're just not taking chances very often, uh, and, they, and they should on our scripts and our friends. Scripts. Yeah, well, I think to the point is like we are from that era, and we're yeah. adults now. So the people who should be telling those stories should be from that era and should yeah. be like our age. So that's where I'm like, yeah, they should be taking a chance on us, like younger writers, right? Yeah, who are who can write about the stuff we lived through like during that time it's like i think a good like parallel example would be like what i'm so in love with right now is all of my favorite musicians that i grew up on like Mm -hmm. in the like mid 2000s going on tour now so like i can go to a tour Mm -hmm. and see like my favorite bands that i used to listen to when i was like 12 like 14 years old and like they're gonna play those those albums like the fact that i i'm going to see hansen in a couple months and they're playing like their underneath album and it's like Mm -hmm. just that album one night like it's kind of how the the Jonas Brothers did their tour where it's like, we're just playing our old albums. I mean, the Eros tour, right? It's like, that to me is like, that is what we want. Like, I want to go to Taylor Swift concert and hear those old albums. Like, I want to go see Hanson, hear that old album. Like, I want to, like, that's the nostalgia we want. I don't want to see, like, newer version of Lizzie McGuire movie. (laughs) Like, I want to see exactly what Lizzie McGuire was, just, like, done in that style. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus, like trying to make it like this new more modern twist on everything i don't know yeah yeah i think we're on the the same page (laughs) for sure (laughs) yeah but Uh, maybe i don't know i want to know what our what our audience thinks because i want to know like are we are we like in the minority minority i don't know like do we do other people what like enjoy this like new content of like um i don't know what I do, you know, that we've discussed this before, because it's <laughs> controversial as well. But like what comes to mind as well is this is actually kind of a compliment toward Barbie. So Barbie, you know, we, we have a whole episode where we mm-hmm. talk about our feelings about yeah. Barbie. But what I think works about Barbie that comes to mind is it. That's not the part that made me upset, like the idea, like they, it was an original story within the Barbie universe, like mm-hmm. it felt um like they were at least understanding the type of nostalgia I would enjoy. And, you know, I had a lot of issues with that film, but that comes yeah. to mind. Like that works for me from a nostalgic standpoint, kind of better than all these sequels that we're talking about. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. That is a good point that like, at least Barbie was like really playing into the Barbie world and like put yeah. us into the Barbie world. It's just that, yeah, the story could have been better, but I agree. It's just like, we want to go back into that, the, those worlds like i'm so here for any kind of mid 2000 like 90s nostalgia type of movie content it's just like i don't 
I don't want it to be about making TikTok videos from that time. <laughs> it's like I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Agreed, agreed. So yeah, let us know what you guys, what you think. I'd be curious what our yeah. audience thinks. Uh, but yeah, is there is there anything else we wanted to discuss? We, we were talking more than I thought we would per usual. So I know, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm like this will be a short episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. I did want to bring up quickly, I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but just that we're really appreciating any reviews. Well, we've asked for reviews before, but like there have been some really sweet ones lately. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You wanted to read some of them? Should I read one? Yeah. I feel like (laughs) I don't see all the reviews all the time. So yeah. Okay. I'm opening Apple Podcasts. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to go to our... Do we have any our... negative reviews? Should we just No, list? I don't think so. Well, let's not give anyone ideas after they... Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Hear how we don't want all these sequels. Please, we can't take the criticism right now. Yeah. We're already We're struggling really... in other ways. Agreed, agreed. Um, don't bring me down on my podcast. <laughs> right? Only positive reviews, please. Um, well, this is back in April. I think I maybe screenshotted this for you, but let's read it. Someone named Julie wrote... My new favorite screenwriting podcast. She gave us five stars. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) And she wrote, my screenwriter friend recommended this podcast to me and I'm loving it. The two hosts are great interviewers and the episodes are so conversational and fun. The guests they have on are legit and very generous about sharing industry info in detail that I hadn't heard anywhere else. If you're looking to break into the rom-com industry, especially with Hallmark or Netflix, this podcast is where it's at. Thanks, Isabel and Aviva, for making this podcast Aww. and giving rom-com some love. That makes me so happy. I know. It's really sweet. I, I do feel like we are, like, I feel like sometimes Aviva and I, we're, we're just kind of like, like, are we going to, like, what are we doing with this? But I feel like I'm always so proud of us for getting out just, like, as much episodes as we can, you know? Like, we're both busy. But I do yeah. feel like sometimes when I look back and read what some of the people say and some of the comments we get it does make me think like, oh yeah, this is kind of like a niche podcast that I yeah. do feel like is helping people. So um, hopefully at least just like getting to hear from those guests, interviewers and kind of get yeah. that inside knowledge is helpful. I mean, I find it always helpful. I feel like it's I always, always leave the episodes being like, wow, we're so lucky we got to talk to this person. I <laughs> that know. They told us this much. <laughs> it's like, it would be, I've talked to us about this before. Like, it's kind of like we're secretly making people like network with us kind of yeah. or just like meet us because I'd feel more awkward being like, if I were in LA, just, you know, you can reach out to someone. I don't know if they will say yes and like, you know, ask them to coffee, but this is kind of a way to like like a secret way to just you know be like please tell us all about you and then we'll publicize you as well Mm -hmm. uh and we'll learn from you so yeah so uh you know there it's been really nice also on twitter like you know we have a few really wonderful listeners who tweet after every episode about like wendy and dana in particular (laughs) we really appreciate you (laughs) both of you um it's just really nice to like hear that you're listening to the whole thing and um enjoying it so if anybody wants to leave us more reviews uh that would be awesome or tell us more like stuff you want to know or hear about I yeah feel like that's helpful for us too is like what kind of questions do you have that like maybe we can try and bring someone on to answer that or are yeah. there like specific writers you want to hear from or like we're totally open to what you guys want to hear more of or what's more helpful. I think we're going to be doing a, an interview coming up soon with a screenwriting professor, which yeah. I definitely have lots of questions for her yeah. about just like formatting, like things like that, that I think maybe could be a fun, like screenwriting 101 thing um, for, for newer writers or even seasoned writers. Cause I feel like stuff changes or like I've learned things or um, mm-hmm. kind of been kind of been like had feedback from things from producers where I'm just like oh I always thought it was this way or like oh I do it this way because of that like so I'm kind of curious to hear her thoughts on yeah um, yeah like technical stuff about writing yeah yeah me too um yeah we have a couple exciting interviews coming up and then I guess we'll be on season three we only have like if we're or well, it depends if we're doing 10 episodes yeah, per season. Oh, how... When did we start this? I think yeah. it's back in October. It feels oh like gosh. almost longer. Uh, yeah. And I remember you reaching out to me and I was, you know, really scared 
like the idea of like speaking on camera. Yeah. Really. Is, and now it doesn't really. I know. Bother you're me, so good actually. at it. I feel Thank like you. it's like, yeah, you're, you're like a pro too. at it. Thank you. <laughs> That's I'm true. Like, I do remember you saying that you were yeah. like, oh, I'm worried. I don't know if I can do yeah, it. And I now- almost, I like my instinct was almost to say no to, you know, you reaching out to me just because it's like, I don't, like, I, it sounded like it was, I wanted to say yes and I did, yeah. but it was just like, I was really the idea of like speaking to guests and it really helps that we we have each other as well I think I'd mm-hmm. be you know now I feel like I could do it if I had to or wanted to like you know have my own podcast but I like that we have like yeah each other to like you know like contribute to the I know conversation yeah it's, how, it's definitely like you definitely keep me motivated to like keep doing it because like I'm just like waiting for the time when everything slows down a little bit yeah. more maybe for work that we can like yeah. really spend more time on this but I feel like I'm proud of us for how far we've already yeah. come. The fact that we've done like what <laughs> twenty episodes or something like, like that. This is, like, I think this will be like our nineteenth. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, it's been really exciting, and yeah, hopefully we'll get some bigger. Well, we love all our guests. Not that bigger sounded mean, but like bigger <laughs> guests. But no, I mean like you know, like Nancy Myers, like kind of big people in the industry yeah. that I've admired for years. I would love to get them on the show eventually. Uh, so if any of you have any connections with some you know names that might be harder for us to get in contact with uh please like hit zach us up. efron zach efron <laughs> yeah let's just let's just as we wrap this up but let's just like we were talking about why well, i would love to talk to aline brush mckenna love to talk to nancy myers uh delilah uh delia not delilah delia oh yeah um, delia efron, efron would be amazing um who else oh the screenwriter bend it like beckham oh, i would love yeah, to yeah. chat with she's so inspiring uh you know, Karen and Kiwi always would love to talk to them. Yeah. Uh, just those people. Oh, Jessica, Jessica Bettinger. Oh, yeah. I would still love on, right? to chat yeah. with her. Yeah. And she wrote Aquamarine and she's Aquamarine. amazing. Uh, so those are some targets, but, you know, whatever, whoever we can get. And we love yeah. talking to everyone. And whoever you guys want to hear from. And, you know, if anyone too wants to has like got a movie made or a movie like that's yeah. in the process of getting made like definitely reach out we'd love to chat with you about that definitely um, yeah, yeah yeah definitely uh we're open to producers too and like i mean I, honestly mm-hmm. the focus right is just like woman working in the mm-hmm. industry uh we kind of always said zach efron would be like the first the guy we would let on <laughs> and then we would. but i do think like there's something like maybe someday like some male rom-com writers i don't know but we, we, we kind of really want to focus them somehow. around female driven but yeah we could also do we could do male we could just do male rom-com leads like hard yeah. proud actors we could have like or <laughs> an episode so we where could we talk to them <laughs> yeah no i think for now like yeah our vision was to just keep uh talking to like female identifying creators just because mm-hmm. the industry is so male dominated yeah. already and i feel like what differentiates our podcast is that yeah we're focusing on the rom-com the chick flick mm-hmm. and those are often you know female driven and you know consumed by mostly a female audience um yeah so yeah but we will see zach if you're listening please hit us up <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna skip all of our other episodes and just listen to this one yes, that's <laughs> so he hears that. <laughs> <laughs> totally he'll he'll just he'll feel drawn to it uh yeah is there anything else like i think i think i think yeah i think everything we wanted to talk about let us know your thoughts i kind of am just genuinely curious to know what other people want just like sort of a i guess open-ended question to our audience is like what kind of movies do you want to see or like what kind of rom-com specifically movies are do you want to see like do you want to see more fan fiction stuff do you want to see more like lgbtq rom-coms do you want to see more older woman younger men (laughs) (laughs) older woman older woman younger woman like Uh, (laughs) yeah i just want like i don't know i'm definitely i think maybe just because of that i'm in my like early 30s i'm just feeling very like nostalgic right now so mm-hmm. for me i do feel like i'm i want more stuff in the style of all of those um 90s early you know, 2000s. agree movies, so. yeah i want rom-coms that are original want. ideas mm-hmm. agreed i want rom-coms that i want to rewatch and that 
is very rare. So I know. Yeah. That's the main mm -hmm. thing is like, just make a good movie that I want to watch all the time that I'm going to watch when I'm sad. Yeah. That's going to comfort me. That's going to become my next like good comfort movie. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I want. Cause all of those movies for us, right. Are all the movies from like the nineties, eighties, like mid two thousands, yeah. I would say like, yeah. I can't think of a good current movie that i'm like yes i watch this all the time i'd be really curious if like gen z like whatever what's the current generation i don't know like if the younger <laughs> how they feel hmm. about what we're talking about and if they're if the films that we kind of hate on sometimes if those are their comfort movies and maybe Ooh, it's just yeah you know a different a different uh, yeah like are they more sector. drawn to the movies that we still like do those still or, or hold the test of time <laughs> yeah or yeah. are they like oh my gosh i can't watch this it's so horrible like i yeah. only watch i don't know i'm trying to think what would be what a did current people, like euphoria yeah I, <laughs> I don't know if that is that a comfort show because no, that is so. like, that show is wild <laughs> i gave it a chance once and it was uh, it was just too dark for me but i do i do love zendaya this has been an episode of When Isabel Met Aviva. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to stay up to date with our episodes, uh, please subscribe. Bonus points if you leave us a positive review. Yeah. You can follow us on Instagram at When Isabel Met Aviva and on Twitter at Isabel Met Aviva. And I'm still on Instagram and Twitter. Isabel, you're on Instagram. Just on Instagram. Yeah, you left, you left the world of X, which is understandable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so please reach out if you need advice or you have any questions about your screenwriting career uh, or you just want to obsess over rom-coms with us. So thank you so much. And we will see you very soon for another interview. Yay. Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>